Good evening, blessings uh, to all of you who have joined us today. Uh, thanks as well for being with us. Our desire uh, is to be able to give you some insight into uh, the principles of the Kingdom of God so as to make the, you know, known to you its King. Uh, because that's eternal life, to know God. <clears throat> and uh, when we do, we naturally would want to make Him known as well because we, I'm sure we cannot contain the, the joy, the bliss of... Uh, of uh, knowing that people can uh, also benefit from the good news of God's love, His forgiveness, His mercy, His grace, the abundant life that He wants for all, all of us, all of us. <clears throat> uh, looking back to the gospel from last Sunday, uh, out of Matthew 13, where Jesus, in, in that chapter, well, in, in the, the reading, anyway, Jesus mentioned the told, told us about uh, told us the three parables. First is uh, the parable of the hidden treasure, and then the second, the pearl of great value, and then the third, the uh, the dragnet. The, the, in in the olden days, there were uh, you know crime was. Uh, was uh, more <clears throat> rampant than than we know today. There were, there were bandits before. It was survival of the fittest, uh, the powerful, and those with weapons. They preyed on the the helpless. And <clears throat> what would happen when there there are like marauding bands, uh, and people would hear of their coming? They would. <clears throat> They would bury their treasure, uh, or else they would lose it to to the bad guys. So what they would do is bury their treasure before uh, before robbers came, and they would leave it underground. In many cases, they would have to flee their homeland, home country. And go somewhere else. Sometimes <clears throat> they would not be back to their own land uh, for several years, many years, and in some cases they would not be back at all until they died. So there are hidden treasures, and some sometimes people, other people, stumble upon them. Say when they, you know, I don't know, when they dig up the soil, they have to plant some things. Uh, or for whatever reason, they they would stumble uh, upon treasure that uh, other people hid, and they would, uh, of course, rejoice about it. And in the parable, Jesus is saying, "There's uh, this man that uh, discovered hidden treasure. So what he did was they, he buries it again, buries it again, uh, sells all the he possesses, so in order to." buy this piece of land in which is the hidden treasure. And of course it's it's likened to the kingdom of God, right? And to God himself. That he is our treasure and upon discovering him, you know, we may not be looking but upon discovering him and his value uh, when we realize that nothing else matters but knowing God which is eternal life, then we would give up everything else that we value, that we cherish, that we treasure uh, for the sake of God. And the other, the, the second parable is about the pearl of great price. Whereas in the first parable, the hidden treasure was uh, discovered by chance, the, the parable of pearl of great price, the, the merchant deliberately, intentionally looks for that something that he knows is valuable. Reminded of, uh, of this one song, uh, I have climbed the highest mountains, I have scaled, uh, I have... Uh, 
whatever, uh, gone to the sea only to be with you. Still, I haven't found what I'm looking for. I've scaled these city walls. I'm still, uh, still haven't found what I'm looking for. But, but <clears throat> this merchant seeks for the spoil of great value, and he spends uh, doesn't say how long, but spends considerable time, and upon finding this pearl of great price, then he does the same, all, uh, sells all that he has and uh, buys this pearl. So the first parable has uh, someone chancing upon a uh, great treasure, the other deliberately, intentionally looks for it and finds it too. Which is what the kingdom of God is about to us, right? To certain people. Some, some have colorful stories and uh, they, don't, they, they don't look go looking for God and yet he, uh, they, they find him one way or another. Others, they seek diligently and they, sometimes they, it takes them time to find what they're looking for, and uh, when they do, they they also respond in a in a positive way, and considers everything else that they they own uh, without value, rubbish, as Saint Paul would say it, rubbish for the sake of finding Jesus Christ and his and God his Father. Either way, the point is that. If we realize how how valuable this treasure is that is God to us, we would see everything else that we have as nothing in comparison. So that's that's the point, right? Now the third <clears throat> parable is <clears throat> about the dragnet. It's about uh, people uh, using a dragnet to catch all kinds of fish. Uh, upon catching fish, they they lay them on the beach and they sort them out. The good fish, one side, the bad fish, the other side. The good fish is uh, uh, harvested and the bad fish is thrown into the fire. Now, I don't know why this default thinking among Christians that that's what will happen on Judgment Day. And the fish are people. Uh, as far as I know, God doesn't have human enemies. He only has human children. He, he does have enemies, but they're not human. Uh, humans he loves, but his enemies are what destroys whom he loves. Sickness and poverty and, and wars and quarreling and divisions and heartaches and and death the ultimate enemy those are god's enemies those are what he destroys and will ultimately destroy but people human beings man his children what he does for them is cause all things to work together for their good he always desires good for them because we always define that as love Desiring and pursuing what is good for another. That's love. And uh, the measure of true love is uh, how much you give in order to fulfill that which, the, the good which the, you desire for another. In the case of God, He loves us so much that He was willing to pay the high price of laying down his life, the most precious life in the universe, <laughs> the most innocent life in the universe, God is willing to give up in order to, to bring good to whom? To those who deserve it or to those who could least, who could, uh, couldn't deserve it less. That's we. We are likened to sheep because pardon the French but sheep are dumb right we don't we're helpless we don't we don't know what we did, we're doing 
uh, which is why he forgives us, right? Because we don't know what we're doing. And we are helpless and ignorant. And without him, uh, we, we cannot survive. You know, he's the source of our life. I'm not putting down men. I'm not, uh, I'm not saying, you know, uh, our nature is evil. And No, our nature is good. It's that, just that we lost our way because of the malice of the, the true enemy, the devil. And he planted temptation uh, into the world and, and lured us to sin. And through our sin, death came into the world and started wreaking havoc. But God is more powerful than that. In fact, Jesus conquered death. And now we are in the process of being restored back to health. Maybe we still have got the sickness that is called death. But we are getting better because of the work of Jesus in us. And so that's that, right? So going back to the, the dragnet, instead of looking at the fish as people, look at it as God's enemies in people. That's how I would look at it. The, uh, the good God preserves. The good God preserves. The good in us, He preserves. The bad in us, He eliminates. That's what He does. He, in the words of the Old Testament prophet, extracts the good from the profane. That's also what St. Paul says. You know, uh, our works <clears throat> will go through fire, the test of fire. Not hellfire, not purgatorial fire, but the testing. And it, uh, the fire will test the quality of each man's work. You know, the fire will not burn people. The fire will test the quality of each man's work. The, our good works will stand the test of fire, will go through the fire, and will be refined. That's what fire does too, is refine things. But the things that cannot stand the test of fire, wood, hay, and stubble, they will not be able to go through the fire and re be refined, they will burn up. They will be destroyed. And that's what they should, should be, is destroyed because they're not good for us. And that's, that's how, what I believe will, will be the process in preparation for what we call the life of the world to come. In the life of the world to come, only the things that stand the test of God's fire, His standard, will make it through there because not everything in this world is bad not everything god created this this world good and some have retained the, their goodness some have been affected by uh by sin and death but there are some who will which will stand the test of fire and in fact will be refined will be improved so then in the life of the world to come, only the good will remain. But again, uh, in order for God to be able to do that, he had to give up his own life. Because I, I would submit a, uh, another, another way of seeing the first two parables. Parable of the hidden treasure and the parable of the, the pearl of great price. And especially the pearl of great price. God, uh, as the song says, even when we, even when I've gone astray, His love has sought me out and found me. See, we didn't, we didn't find God. He, he looks for us. So we, we're like the lost sheep in, in, in Luke chapter 15 in the parable. Uh, you know, the good shepherd, God, leaves the healthy 99 sheep and he goes for the one lost sheep and he doesn't stop until he finds it. Man, what assurance we have for what some theologian called uh, Jesus as the hound of heaven. He, he will relentlessly, unceasingly look for us until he finds us and saves us and restores us to health, to life. We are his treasure. We are his pearl of great price. And he 
sold everything, gave himself up in order to purchase us, to redeem us, to ransom us, to restore us to the abundant life that he always has intended for us. That's who our God is. And that's the good news. That's the good news. And the only good response to that is love as well. You know, if I would, I would treasure anyone who treasures me. If somebody doesn't care about me, I don't, you know, I probably would cherish them less. I should love them. But don't we appreciate people whom we know values us, right? And no one does that more than our Father, God, and His Son, Jesus. May we develop a relationship with them in love because that is, that is eternal life. And may that be true in your life as well as you continue in your journey and your growth in the knowledge and love of our God. And thank you once again for joining us. Uh, we hope to have been able to plant a seed of, of good insight about the kingdom of God and about the love of God in your heart, in your mind. May it germinate, may it bear fruit. It's 30, 60, 100 fold in your life. God bless you. Again, Ariel Santos here. We'll see you again next week on the, news, on the Wednesday evening.